In this help video, what we're going to do is we're going to go through setting up a daily appointment or reservation. The first thing you want to do when you're going to set up a reservation is click on the calendar below to set the date of the appointment. For example, if you have a walk-in or you have a telephone call where somebody wants a reservation, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to indicate what date they want it on. So we're going to pick the 15th. As you can see, there are two current records on the 19th. We're going to click on the 15th and you notice how it highlighted in blue because it's not the current date. The current date is the 10th. We already have reservations out in this space and also over here. So let's create a new appointment or reservation. You can uh, use the plus arrow up here on the thing to add a new record. Let's go ahead and do that. And what's going to happen, it's going to bring up the new appointment screen. In the new appointment screen, the first thing you're going to notice is that there's a title for the appointment and then a client, a room assignment, and a room status. This is really irrelevant until you understand what rooms are available. If you take a look down here in this, in this portal where it says room availability, what's going to happen is that rooms are put in here by the date. So basically the arrival date is what sets the room status and the actual room information. There's an arrival time, a depart time, and the date at which this thing was modified, if it were modified for whatever reason. And there's also uh, an icon at the end of the row that will take you to this particular uh, reservation. And they remind you now, these are current res reserves or past uh, departures for people that have already gone from the, from the uh, building. So if you clicked in here really quickly, you could change the record in this screen, which is the portal for room assignments. If you made a change or just wanted to review it, and for example, to add a departure time, you could do that. And then when you return back to the appointment, it would return you to the appointment you're looking at. Now, when you're doing a new appointment, the first thing you want to ask a customer, have they ever been at your lodge before? If they have, then they will be in the drop-down listing where we booked them in the past. Uh, the next thing you would do, if you know that they're not in here and they told you that, you would go ahead and be adding them to the booking. You can get to a booking by either starting right here at the, at the customer list, which will take you in where you can add a new booking, or you can start it here and then go either in and at your choice, add it here if you know that there's an available uh, room. Now, the way you do that is you come down to the room listing portal. The room listing portal shows you the latest status of all the rooms that are in this application so that you've added for your own lodge or hotel or whatever your home bed and breakfast or whatever and these are all obviously listed by the last uh, or the actual kind of room that they are and as you go down and scroll down you'll see that there's different kinds of rooms like two bedrooms and kings and so forth and hotel rooms in this particular sample record the next thing is the room number for that type of room then its status as far as it available now, if somebody's coming in, they're arriving, and you've already booked it, you would put an arriving status. If it's available and no one's in the room currently, you would put available. If it's it, somebody just left and you're cleaning the room, you would put in cleaning. If they departed and nothing is ready yet to be uh, occupied, you'd put departed. If they're in the room already now and they, they're booked and they're in the room, it's occupied. If it's out of service, maybe it's being painted or plumbing's being repaired so it's not available for use. And then there's a pending reservation uh, also. Now, these actually can be modified even on a scrolling, rolling uh, thing like on the iPads. There are editable screens that allow you to click on the underlying word at the top of that status thing in the other part of the application. It will pop up another screen so you can modify or add different things where there is underlines on the titles of fields. Now, if I clicked in this, I could show you if you come over to this area, it will show all the rooms and they're not in any particular order. So if you come into this screen, you can click on the type. It will resort them by that, or you can resort them by number or type of availability or the date, the last time they were statused. So if you click on status and there's an older date, it'll bring those to the top of the uh, screen so you can update the status on those rooms. The whole purpose of this screen is in the morning, prior, or during the day, you can change the status on any room and update it and then change the date based on that. You should have up-to-date status on these every day 
unless the room's going to be occupied for that period of time and you're showing occupied in here, you can put the end date out here so that when it is occupied and ending that, the status will change on that date. So it's kind of looking forward, knowing that it's occupied out until that date. So that tells you that. So you can use your own uh, uh, ideas as far as how to use these and to modify them to your needs. Now, if you say, for example, you want to go right back to the appointment you were just looking at, and room number one is available, so I'm going to assign number room number one. And I've already picked the person, so I'm going to say, I'm going to put the person in there, and I'm going to use my own name, and I'm going to put in room number one, and I'm going to put a pending reservation. And then the next thing I'm going to do, so this shows on the calendar, I'm going to put room number one, colon, and the name of the person, which is myself, just for practice purposes. I've already assigned the date. Now I'm going to say in the statuses, I've got call customer if it needs to be called back, cancel a reservation, customer departed, pending reservation, rebook, reservations, uh, reserve deposit, and reserve request. Now I'm going to put in reserve request because this is a request out in today's in the future and I have not received a deposit or anything that's going to say that this room is going to be occupied. The next thing I want to do is for the calendar for room one, I want this to be reflected, this information in room number one. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add Alan, who's one of the staff, on his calendar so he can see what rooms were booked. And now we know that uh, if I wanted to put more people in and staff them with more users, I could also notify them by putting an X in here. If, I, if you want to, you can add new users in the main calendar screen by following the main calendar instructions under the icon for the question mark. It'll show you how to add users. If you're on the server, and this application is on the server, and you're actually accessing it through a, a browser, you would have to submit this record to complete the changes on this record. If you're using it on the iPad as a client to the server, you do not have to do that, because as you leave each field, the fields will be updated. So let's go ahead and put a time in for this arrival. So we have that information in there. And you normally assign a standard time. You could put a standard time, or if you're going to let them be a late departure or early departure, you could put that time in there. There's also a field over here where you can add a status. If I tab in here and then tab across, it normally just opens up. Or you can just add a new status in here that'll give a, a odd status. If you don't have a regular one, you can put it in there. For example, if I hit this, it says booking, pending, and canceled. I could edit this and add new ones. Now, if you're on an iPad, this will not work because you only have these options. If you want to edit it, you'll have to do it on a PC to add that change in status. The next thing is on the iPad or a device that has a menu where you need more space, you can say show or hide the menus. If you click this once, the menus will be hidden. If you click it again, the menus will come back. Okay, let's go back to some of the other things that we covered. We covered room availability, room listing, we've gone to the portals, and we've uh, checked on availability. The next thing is we're going to go back and close this record since we've already got it on there, and we're going to look, and you're going to see that it is now in the calendar. Now, if I re-click on this and go back in, interestingly enough, what it's done is it's changed to the edit appointment screen, which is a different screen. In this one now, I did in the last one, but I do have a thing called to do. And what a to do is, is if you have a description of something you want to add that has to be done to the room, or say, for example, this is a wedding suite and you want to add flowers or champagne or whatever, that would be a to do that would be done before the arrival of the person. You can also put step by step different things in here. For example, if you have a group of people and you're doing something for the group within these different apartments, you could add different things in here for each group member as to how you have status or information you want to keep. There's also an appointment sub, and in the appointment sub, you can assign things to people to do them. For example, cleaning the room, servicing something, or whatever on that room as far as a to-do task. And then if they're actually getting man hours booked on it, you can put the person in there by user by clicking on the plus sign. You can add that information in there that gives you additional information as far as the start date, the, uh, the description, and then the time spent. What the time spent does is it actually shows time that was booked that may be chargeable either to the room or as a cost where you're paying an employee for services or a service company that's come in and actually done some kind of service. 
on this line. So this is a way of tracking extra expenses. So now going back, one of the things I want to point out is that under room availability, you'll notice that there is a drop down for the individual that is in the room. Recall we went in and we changed status in, by clicking the green arrow at the end of the line. If you needed to add, say for example, my booking, and then you wanted to, you forgot and wanted to add the person's name, you could always go back and do that by clicking on that appointment and changing this. But for the most part, you'll notice that the line is grayed out and there's only one field that can be edited, which is the person. The reason this is done is you don't want people editing on this portal. You want them doing it in the actual record. The next thing we're going to cover is the actual bookings in the booking screen and the information that is added to that screen. One last thing, if this is a completed booking for one reason or another, say it's canceled or whatever, and you click on the completed, the information on this line when you go back to the calendar, the main calendar, will have a line drawing, drawn through this information on this title. For this purpose, we're just going to go ahead and take that out and return to the main screen. And we can also do the same thing over here. If you take and put the completed over here, you'll notice that it draws a line through the main calendar screen. So as appointments are completed, you want to go ahead and put a completed in there. If you do not put a completed in, they'll end, over, uh, end up over in the expired information over here, and then you'll have to update them. So this is kind of a flag that you did not update the record and you did not uh, complete the actual transaction for the appointment. This line right here, or the X, will delete the record. There's really no reason to delete records that are successful appointments that have been completed. You want to keep those uh, because you will, uh, what I call, orphan the booking record. You want to keep those records except for the ones that are not successful bookings and not successful stays by the individual that was being booked. That is if they call in and cancel. And even then you can change the status in the edit record to show a cancellation here or a rebooking required. So you have to call them back again. Okay, if you have any questions, you can either send me an email or call me at your discretion, or you can go to the uh, support site and write me a, a chat message if I'm not online, or you can actually chat with me online and we can actually go through the questions that you have. Thank you for taking this video.